the, the kind of the breakdown of of what happened as far as Scott passing and uh, the timeline. But uh, Scott had um, was you know locked down. It was in a little little uh, duplex. He lived in New Smyrna or Smyrna, I think it is Smyrna, Georgia. Uh, it's by it's over by where the uh, Brave Stadium is, mm-hmm. and um, Scott was getting Grubhub, and you know he had some Chinese uh, takeout place that would bring him vodka. He told me all this shit. It wasn't like you know, and uh, he uh, was making some uh, Kool Aid, and he he put the uh, the plastic pitcher up to the refrigerator and the ice went in it, but a couple of the pieces of ice as always bounced out and landed on the floor. Mm -hmm. They went over, stirred it. And, uh, I'm I'm sure it was crystal light because he did, he always ate pretty clean. And, um, he, uh, was going back to get something and like one of those pieces of ice caught his heel he did the fucking whoops a daisy and fucking landed and broke his other hip. Mm-hmm. And he's in the middle of his living room. I mean, not the middle of his kitchen. kitchen yeah. And he's he's in so much pain he can't move. He tries to move several different times. He can't move. Finally, he passes out. He wakes up. And this, now it's it's nighttime. It's so he's been he has no idea he can, he can see his phone where his phone is over by his recliner, and on like in between he's in between that and the Kool Aid, so that he 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 ends up passing back out, wakes up, and at this point he's just like, I'm so dehydrated. I, I, I'm gonna I, and he's got a defibrillator. Uh, and a pacemaker in his heart. And he's like, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna croak if I don't get some, some fluids. So he just, he turned and just gutted it and got his back to the, to the cabinet and reached up with two hands. He said, like he was picking up a Fabergé egg and got that pitcher of Kool Aid and just drank it like through the spout, sip by sip. He said, you know, slowly it was like he got, you know, enough to him, and he was able to just drag himself to the, and he, he called uh, 911, and, and they came and got him, and, and they took him to the hospital. So he went to, like, Kennestone Hospital, which is, you know, like a fucking two, two out of, you know, two out of five-star hospital. Mm. And um, I don't think that Scott had insurance. I know he's Scott. I know Scott didn't have insurance. And, um, but he needed, um, he needed to get the hip fixed. And he had some other problems and some other issues, and they did some CAT scans, and, you know, he had some kind of perforation in his bowel. and uh, As a as result it, of the fall? I, I don't know. It, right. As a result of CT scans. And you know, I, I talked to him a couple of times um, on the phone. I mean, I talked to him every day when he was in the hospital because there was an actual landline that I could call. And Dallas was 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 you know Dallas was was really a good a, a great friend during this as far as being there for Scott. And what we're gonna do is, um, Dallas had just gotten had just gotten uh, remarried to Paige, his, his 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 new wife. And they had talked about it, and Dallas, you know, asked would it be cool because Dallas has got a, you know, Dallas is the only motherfucker on earth that like upgraded his life at sixty. You know, he's got a big ass fucking house. Everybody else is trying to get out of their shit. You know, and Dallas is like, fuck it, <laughs> I don't have any kids. I'd die. Fuck, what are they gonna do? So, um, if you turn the house into a into a production studio for well, your rehab show, you get to write the whole fucking thing off, don't you? Well, I mean, he's got a he's got a, a studio. He's got a, a hell. He, for a while there, his studio was doing half the AE, AEW uh, fucking editing and everything else when they fucking first kicked off. Ah, uh, he's he's done well. So he he was keeping me in the loop, and then uh, 
But they were going to bring, um, when it came time to get Scott out of the hospital, they were going to bring him to, to Dallas's, and he was going to stay at Dallas's and kind of recover there. And um, so I talked to Dallas. I was in, uh, Bobby Fulton had some show that I was at that I was, I was signing with Kurt Angle. And that was on Saturday. And I got a call Sunday morning. At, oh God, it was early. And it was uh, it was Paul. And Paul said that um, Scott had had three heart attacks and it was like, didn't look good. And so I tried to get uh, a flight to Atlanta, couldn't. So went back to Daytona Beach and then couldn't get a flight out of Daytona Beach. And then they were just, at that point, they said that, you know, they were going to, to, to pull the plug. And the doctor said that it would be, you know, maybe 10 minutes that Scott be alive. So before they pulled the plug, we all, all the click guys uh, got on speakerphone and we all talked to them. Our cried basically is all we did. And, uh, it was a few hours later, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, like, it was like seven hours later. And, uh, Scott was still alive. And Scott's brother said that, the only reason Scott's still alive is because he wanted to make sure that he lived he lived long enough where Dana missed her fucking flight and she couldn't go back to Colorado. <laughs> and I said, fuck yeah. I said, that's my boy right there, man. But, uh, yeah. Uh, you know he heard you guys because they do say the last thing that goes is the hearing. So... To anybody who um, gets that opportunity <clears throat> to say something, even though you think someone can't receive it, there's enough evidence that they do. So yeah. it's good that you guys did that. How did, um, now you know I got to go there. How, how did WWE do with handling Scott's passing? So close to uh, what was the date uh, that that uh, Scott died? Was it? Uh, <clears throat> let me see. I have it here. Thirteenth, uh, seventh. I don't know. Right, and that was coming up right on. Let's see. It was That's right on, before March WrestleMania. 14th. So WrestleMania was coming up about a month after that. So, how was that going to go? It was, it was, it, no, it was, it was, WrestleMania was much closer to, to, to Scott's death than that because we, WrestleMania, we, we didn't have the uh, service. Uh, we didn't put Scott to rest and have his service till after Mania. So there was some talk about doing some things. But the service was, the service was a couple of weeks after that, wasn't it? Wasn't there some time after the passing? I, I kind of remembered that it was. He passed, he passed March 14th. Right. When was WrestleMania? April 2nd. Okay. So it was two weeks, about two weeks. Yeah. And they, you know, they, they wanted to do some things and I was, I just told them, I said, man, I said, I, you know, you guys can do whatever you want to do. You know, there was talk about doing like a hologram thing with Scott and some other things. I said, you guys can do whatever you want to do. I said, I'm not. I said, I'm not going to fucking say anything negative about anybody that wants to do something for him. I said, I just, I, I'm not ready. You know, and I, I, fuck, I didn't leave my house for, I didn't go on the road. I didn't do shit for a while. I mean, I, that, you know. It's too soon. Yeah, it fucked me up. Yeah. It's too soon. <clears throat> 